railing and birth pain to be delivered, and uh, there appeared another wonder. Behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And this is what I was saying a little bit earlier on. Okay, if we can say, we know that, let me read this. Uh, 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 and his third, he's, he, he's told you the third part of the stars, which was, and it says they did cast them down to the earth. So what does that say? You got it to where you got 12 stars, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. He cast down the third part of it, which was, um, which was what was left. Because you had it to where two thirds, quote unquote, two thirds had gone after the Assyrian, um, uh, after uh, the Assyrian captivity of uh, the 10 tribes. Basically, you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi left out there. Okay, you know, a remnant was left there. There are thereabouts a third. Okay, so you can understand. Not a third in number, but it's just a spiritual. Uh, you, you, you understand what it's talking about on a spiritual sense, right? Okay, so it says there, uh, um, and it's third part to the third, so, and, and it tells you the third part of the stars, and that's dealing with uh, um, the flood that they poured out in, in terms of troops against uh, the Israelites, uh, the Jews that were staying there at Jerusalem, all right. Um, uh, after the time of of of, of Yahweh Shai, right, and she brought forth a man child, child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and she was, and her child was caught up onto the most side to his throne. So that's dealing with Yahweh Shai. So the point I was making way way earlier was that what we can come to the conclusion that Esau is the one that's ruling. He's that red dragon because they came up against the twelve tribes of Israel. They're the ones that took down the Jews or the so-called Jews. Right in the time of Titus Vespasian and so on and so forth, and also too they're the ones that came up against the Lord during the, the Herodian reign. Right, and they tried to kill the Lord, but the Lord was delivered, and he was caught up unto unto un, unto the sky. So we know that the battle is between Jacob and the dragon. Okay, the Israelites and the dragon. We know the dragon to be the Edomites. So the simple thing is to try analyze who are these people that fit the bill. Okay, for the ones that the Edomites come up against all the time. And it's got to be the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites. Because they not only do they fit in terms of what you see on the day to day in the movies, they also fit the prophecies, man. Okay? They also fit the prophecies, man. Alright? So let me just quick hit these, quickly hit these points and then I'm going to call it quits. To the book of Revelation 12 and 12, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens. No, no, no. Revelation 12 and 7, it says, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the, uh, and the dragon fought with his angels, which is F-35 jets and whatever, whatever, right? And the dragon fought against with his angels and prevailed not. Neither was his place any more in heaven found. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, that deceived the whole world, right? He was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. So they was taken out, man. And then uh, let's finish up here within the book of Second Ezra, the sixth chapter. So that's that war that's going to play out within the world's war three, all right? And they're not going to be able to prevail, right, in fighting against the Lord. In fact, the Lord was going to cast them down, huh? and they was going to go into this hardcore slavery, all right? Second Ezra six and fifty four. It says, after these Abdom also, and thou hast made Lord over all creatures. Of him come we all. So all the people come from Adam, okay? Uh, and the people whom thou was. Uh, and the people also whom thou hast chosen, right? All this have I spoken, O Lord, because thou hast made the world for our sakes, the Israelites. The world was made for the Israelites, okay? And as for the other people which come from Adam, thou hast said they are nothing but likened unto spittle, and likened the abundance of them as a drop of a vessel, which is quoted also within the book of Isaiah, where the scripture says that what? The Lord likened their, um, uh, the, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, right? He counted the isles as a very little thing, okay? And now, O oh Lord, they behold they, the, the, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have become to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, who's the people of the Lord, the Israelites, um, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, are given into their hands. If the world be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance? All right, and how long shall this endure? And the simple fact is, not much more longer. Right, because now you got it to where now you got the transition of power. You're having a spiritual transition of power, a battle between good and evil playing out within the spiritual realm right now, and the, the good, which is the Israelites, is going to prevail. All right, so hopefully that was uh, made sense. Um, with that, I'm going to say, Oh, praise unto Yahweh, Shimon, Shabbat, Shimon, Kakadash, and Lord's will be out here next week. Shalom.